Hello my dear time travelers, in today's video you will learn how you can create this hyper realistic flipping card animation in PowerPoint. As you can see once we click on any of these beautiful cards, they come up and flip and on the back side we can have any information that we wish. And that's super awesome because we can use this interactive presentation idea to showcase anything that we wish, products, services, photos or anything else. And please make sure that you have morph transition in your PowerPoint version. And let's go, let's start the interstellar journey. And first of all, let's make sure that we choose the blank slide layout so that we have a blank slide. And now let's fill this slide with a beautiful black color. And next, let's start designing that beautiful photo card. And to design this card, we'll have to insert a rounded rectangle. And for the height, I'm using 16 centimeters and for the width, 9 centimeters. But of course, feel free to use any dimensions that you wish. And if you'd like to adjust the roundness of your rounded rectangle, you can just grab this little yellow handle and do that. And now let's use no outlines and for the fill, let's just go to format shape and let's fill this rounded rectangle with a beautiful picture. So let's just select picture and currently we have this wooden texture and let me use a different picture and for that let me jump into Leonardo AI, an image generation platform. And over here in my liked feed, I have collected a couple of beautiful photos created by the community that I really like. And let's just use this one. Let's just zoom in and let's copy this photo. And to do that, let's just right click and choose copy image. Now we can get back to PowerPoint. Let's make sure that the rounded rectangle is still selected. And let's click on clipboard and skadoosh. The photo has been pasted as the fill of this rounded rectangle. And additionally, we can go into the crop options and choose fill. And this way this photo will look perfectly inside of the rounded rectangle because sometimes the photos might get distorted and by using the crop fill option you'll make sure that the photo will look perfect inside of a shape. And next let's hold down the control and shift keys to drag a copy in a straight line to the right side and this copy on the right side is going to be the back side of our card. And now let's jump into the format shape to do a couple of adjustments and first of all let me flip this uh, copy on the right side horizontally because this is going to be the back side of our card. And now let's jump into picture corrections and for the brightness let me enter minus 50 to make this photo a bit darker. And now let's jump into the artistic effects, let's find blur and let me add maximum blur. So let's go with 100 because later on we'll be inserting some text on the back side of this card and the text will be much more readable on this kind of blurred dark background. And now my friends, let me quickly jump to my previous presentation and check what kind of elements I have placed on the back side of this card. So we have this little Leonardo logo, a couple of text boxes and a button at the bottom of this card. So for now, let's just copy this Leonardo logo. Let's get back to our presentation and let's paste that little picture somewhere over here. And for these text boxes, let's do them from scratch so that you can see what kind of font I'm using, what kind of line spacing and all of that good stuff. So let's insert a text box and let's type in anything that we wish, for example, a picture name and let's position it somewhere over here, just below the logo. That's nice. And actually, let me jump back into Leonardo AI website and let's copy the name of this uh, beautiful photo. OK, so let me copy this first uh, sentence of this prompt. Let's get back to PowerPoint and let's paste that text into this text box. OK, let's make sure we paste values only so we don't get any additional formatting and let's resize this text box so that it fits inside of this uh, card. OK, so the font is called Darker Grotesque Semi Bold font size 20. And now for the line spacing, as you can see, I'm using multiple 0 0.7 because with single, it would look like this. The spacing is too wide, in my opinion. So let's use multiple 0 0.7. And this way we get this beautiful narrow spacing between these two lines of text. That's nice. And next, my friends, let's insert one more text box below. Let's type in prompt details. OK, let me do a few more adjustments and I'll catch you in a second. And now below these two text boxes, let's insert a rounded rectangle that we'll use to store all of the prompt information. So for this rounded rectangle, let's use no fill, but let's use a beautiful subtle white outline. OK, so once again, let me do all of that and I'll catch you in a second. And by the way, if you'd like to generate some awesome looking images as well, then check out Leonardo AI. Link is in the video description. And let's just jump back into Leonardo AI and let's copy this whole prompt. And we can do that by clicking on this little button. That's nice. 
And now let's just paste all of that information inside of this rounded rectangle. That's nice. And next, let me right click on the rounded rectangle. Let's go into the text box options and let me choose resize shape to fit text so that this rounded rectangle adapts to the height of our text. And let's make sure that we have equal margins across all of the edges. And this way, our text box is going to look super delicious. And next, let me quickly align all of the text boxes and the logo so that everything is looking well balanced. Okay, my friends, and now let's get back to my previous slide and let's check out if we are missing something. Okay, so next, let me show you how we can create that beautiful gradient button. And to create a button, once again, we'll use a rounded rectangle. So let's just draw a beautiful rounded rectangle. Of course, we'll change the fill color later on. Okay, so for the font, I'm using darker grotesque semi-bold font size 14. The text color is white and the text is center aligned inside of the rounded rectangle. Let's type in anything that we wish, for example, like and subscribe if you're enjoying this video. Okay, my friends, and let's make sure there is no outline and let's make sure that we have only fill and let's choose a gradient fill and we have four color stops. We need just uh, two colors, so let's remove those color stops in the middle. And now let's say that you find some beautiful colors on the internet that you'd like to use. And in this case, we can just hit print screen and copy this beautiful button from Leonardo AI. And now let's just paste that little screenshot into our slide, okay? And by using the eyedropper tool, we can copy these exact colors. Let's make sure that we select our button. Let's select the first color stop. Let's use the eyedropper. And let's just pick this color to copy it. That's nice. Let's do the same procedure for the second color. And of course, we can change the gradient direction so that it goes from left to right. So let's go into the direction drop down menu and let's choose this preset. And now our button is looking super beautiful. Okay, my dear friends. So now we have successfully designed the front side and the back side of our card. And now let's make sure that we save both of these sides as pictures. So let's right click on this guy and let's choose save as picture. Let's type in the name, for example, front, and let's make sure that we go with the PNG format because we want to see those rounded edges. With JPEG, we won't see them. And for this copy on the right, let's make sure that we select all of the elements and let's choose save as picture again. Let's uh, give it a name back and let's choose PNG once again. Okay, so now we have two pictures of the front side and of the back side. Okay, my friends, and next let's jump into this magical website called Vectory.com where we can take those two PNG images that we have just exported from PowerPoint and convert them into a single proper 3D model, okay? And I'm sure you could do this with Blender as well, but in this case, let's use Vectory because I think it is really user-friendly, okay? So let's just open up a fresh blank new project. And the first thing that we have to do is import or insert our PNG images. So let's just go to import and first of all, let's find the front side uh, picture that we have exported. Here it is. And let's just click open and skadoosh. As you can see, the photo has been successfully inserted into the 3D space, but currently it is laying flat on the ground. So let's make sure that we rotate it along the X axis and we can just grab this curved red line and move it to the right side, just like that. Or we can use this X input field. So let's just move it upwards until we have 90 degrees in the X uh, field. So we can just type in 90 to be precise. And now this photo is standing straight, just like that. Super nice. Okay, my friends, and now let's take a look at the back side of this card. And as you can see, it is transparent. So we can only see this photo from one side. And that's really good because for the back side, we can insert a second picture. And this way we'll have two pictures from two sides. So for the second picture, let's choose the back side that we have exported from PowerPoint. And once again, the photo has been successfully inserted into the center of our 3D space. And we can grab this red arrow and move this second photo to the side so that we can better see all of the photo cards. And now first of all, let's just fix the rotation of this second photo card. Let me just zoom to the side, okay? And once again, we can grab that curved uh, red uh, line and move this card upwards or just use the input field and let's just type in 90. But of course, we have to flip the second photo to the other side because we want to have it on the back side, okay? And to do that, at this time, we have to use the blue curve 
this is the z axis and we can flip the card alongside the z axis and this way we can flip it into the other side okay and to be precise for the z let's use 180 degrees for the y let's use zero and for the x we should have minus 90 okay and now the last thing that we have to do is to make sure that both of these cards are sitting in the same position or in the same coordinates so this first card is sitting at zero zero and let's make sure that the second card is sitting at the same coordinates because i have moved this card slightly to the right side so let's just type in zero and zero as well and now both of these cards are sitting perfectly in the same spot and on one side we should see the front picture okay and on the back side we should see the back picture okay and now my friends we can export this card as a 3d model and let's make sure that we export this 3d model as a glb type 3d model so let's just go to export and over here we can choose the type of the 3d model let's use glb because it is supported by powerpoint and let's click on download that's super duper awesome and now we can get back into powerpoint and use this card as a 3d model and now let's just hit enter to insert a new slide and let's make sure that this slide has a nice dark background as well and now let's just go to insert 3d models this device and let's look for that 3d model that we have just downloaded let me just go to my downloads folder and here it is and let's click insert and skadoosh here it is a proper 3d photo card in powerpoint on one side we can see the photo itself and on the other side we can see all of the information and now we can have a lot of fun with morph transition okay so let's just duplicate the current slide and on the duplicate slide let's flip the card to the other side that's nice we can as well adjust the rotation if we wish that's beautiful and all that's left is to apply the morph transition to both of these slides and now let's jump back to the previous slide and let's make this photo card a bit smaller just like that this way once we apply the morph transition to both of these slides we'll get a bit more dramatic effect so I'm using two seconds uh, morph transition duration for both of the slides and this is the result as you can see once we transition into the next slide we're getting this beautiful 3d card flip animation super duper awesome and you can create as many of these beautiful flipping 3d cards as you wish in this case I have created 12 cards so let's check them out once again and by the way these tutorial slides are absolutely free to all of my PowerPoint Animation Mastery course students I'll attach these slides to chapter 11 morph animations and if you're truly interested in mastering PowerPoint animations and taking your presentations to the next level then I definitely recommend checking out the PowerPoint Animation Mastery course link is in the video description thank you everyone for watching stay happy stay healthy and I'll see you on the next one